episode number 730 of Let There Be Talk on New Year's Day 2024. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to, you know, learn Spanish. I'm going to quit. What the fuck? Don't put that pressure on you. Just get up and live each day. You know what I mean? That's all you can do. You can't be putting all that pressure on yourself. Change. I'm a new me. Uh, spiritual uh, awakenings. All that. It's all good, man. You know what I mean? Just get up and go, oh, fuck, it's another year. I keep seeing those guys on Instagram. I got 21 summers left. I got... 15 summers left, you know, like if you, if you uh, count it that way of like, uh, I'm just jumping into the insanity right here. Welcome to the show, actually. Fuck. I don't know. Uh, I'm just barely awake. I've been out all fucking night, but anyway, don't put the pressure on it, you know, just get up and, and, and thank God or whatever you uh, worship. I don't worship anything. I worship comedy, actually. Uh, but thank you for tuning in and, you know, just get up and, and go, shit, I'm alive. What a weird start. Weird. I never know how to start these goddamn podcasts when I'm doing a solo episode. It's like, okay, I know what I want to talk about, but how do I fucking start it? How do I get in? That's how, that's how it is for doing stand-up comedy. It's always the weirdest the first like two minutes you're up there because the object of doing comedy is trying to just completely be yourself. And it's sometimes you get up there and you're trying to be yourself and they're just looking at you like, Where, is there going to be a, a, a big celebrity comic next or wh who's this guy? <laughs> Welcome to the machine. Welcome to the show. Um, what is it? It's uh, one o'clock on New Year's Day, and I'm uh, mm, I'm just getting up. I was out very late last night. Speaking of stand up, I uh, just did the tally. So a total of fourteen years has happened and stand up, which I can't fucking believe 14 years. And I've done 5,562 sets. That goddamn COVID fucked me up. I'd be at 6,000, but there was two years. I've got uh, asterisks next to it, like the steroid era. You know, there's Barry Bonds. 72 home runs with an asterisk next to it. But uh, year 11 and year 12, virus era, I've got on my notes. Which I still did 115 on the first year of COVID, which is fucking insane to think about. Because at the time, I thought I was never going to be doing comedy again. So, uh, and then year 12 was virus linger. It was, it was kind of a slow get back, but that was 264. This year, I ended the year with 314 shows. And uh, I want to give a massive uh, thank you to Bill Burr, one of my greatest friends ever, an incredible human, and just a huge help to my career because uh, even 14 years in, I struggle with finding uh, spots because I don't have the manager or agent. I've said it a million times, but it's uh, it's really that hard. Unless you're selling tickets, man. If if you're fucking one of those TikTokers and you threw up a, a video and it blew up and you can do like a thousand tickets, they don't give a fuck what kind of comedy or what you're doing. They're going to book you. It's all about selling drinks, my friends. And um, that's all right. That's all right with me. I just keep chipping away at the stone, as the great Aerosmith would say. But uh, 
Bill has just, uh, you know, really been a goddamn fucking saint. Great friend. Thank you, Bill. Starting out my 24 with sending love to you, my man, while you're out there doing the tailgating at the Rose Bowl uh, college football game. And uh, speaking of that, Acme in Minneapolis has booked me. I've been trying to get in there for 10 years, and it is an honor to do this club. So Acme in March. And, of course, the Bond Scott Bash is next Tuesday, uh, January 9th at the Avalon. Tickets at deandelray.com. There's a few tickets left. And then I go to the Comedy Cellar in Las Vegas, January 22nd through the 28th. And the great Fort Collins, Colorado, the Comedy Fort, also in March. So those are my dates coming up. Please get tickets. Come out. And uh, I got a bunch of new stuff I'm working on. Feeling good. Feeling good. Uh, 49ers. Congrats to them. Sealed the bye week and uh, going into the playoffs looked great. Purdy back to form. And uh, yeah, so I just want to give them a shout out. Also, if you are in San Francisco, I want to tell you this. Uh, Frisco Choppers is having a bike show. And they're one of the great old school chopper shops in America. January 14th, San Francisco. Amazing. Go see the Frisco Choppers bike show. I want to try to get up there for that. I want to see uh, if I can boogie up for a day and come back. Be great to see that. That was a place, I very first place I bought some billet grips for my FXR. They were... Um, Arlen Ness billet grips, and I bought them at Frisco Cycles, Frisco Choppers. I believe it was down on Bay Street or something, down there by uh, on the way to Old Candlestick. Rest in peace, Candlestick. It was kind of like just in a warehouse area. It was so long ago, man. But that shop has a lot of history and just just chopper history. They were on the uh, history of the chopper, uh, Jesse James documentary on discovery channel. And, uh, you know, they're the real deal chopper shop. So January 14th, that's happening in San Fran. All right, let's get into it. What are you guys going to be doing for the, uh, January? Are you going to be, uh, quitting sugar? You're going to be working out. You're going to be doing all that shit like I was talking about. I, um, I've, you know, I've had some on and off over the last six months. I lost my mom. Tomorrow is going to be the one year uh, mark of when my mom passed away. And I still, uh, I'm still tore up by it. And uh, I realize uh, some of my inner demons lately uh have been uh trying to still deal with that uh mostly from the holidays and not having my mom around and then of course her birthday is in march so it's just been uh it's been fucked and i'll just be honest it's just uh insane the uh the soldier the rock and roll teacher my hero, my mom, she is gone. And tomorrow will be one year ago when that happened. And uh, I still need to uh, properly grieve that. I know it. I've been pushing it down. I was dealing with a, a bunch of her, her stuff and then trying to work and keep my head above water. So, uh, you know, I miss her every day. And I think about her and I would dedicate that Bon Scott bash to her since she took me to see ACDC in 1978. Uh, I love you, mom. And I uh, think about you every day. So that being said, you know, I want to get back onto the super clean eating. I still don't fuck with sugar, but over the last six months, I was eating like some pizza here and there. Actually, the last kind of year, I was out on that tour with Marcus King. Late night, nothing around, eating some fucking pizza, maybe a burger bun. Shit I don't do. 
uh, white rice here or there. I don't eat any of that, but uh, out of uh, some, uh, you know, depression and insanity in my mind, I was like, ah, fuck it. But uh, starting today, I'm definitely back on the regiment. Still, like I said, seven years or so, no sugar. I don't fuck with candy, ice cream, sodas. It's amazing the demon that soda is, and they can sell it. Like, uh, you know, they'll 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 ban something like weed. They, you know, weed was illegal for so long and yet they'll sell soda all day long to like kids. And uh, I was reading that middle America, the soda consumption of an average person in middle America, it was mind boggling. It was something like 2000 gallons a year or maybe it was 200, but I, you know, soda, I haven't had soda since probably 2006. And, uh, I, you know, I used to, when I quit drinking booze, I went to uh, Arizona iced teas and I put on a fucking bunch of weight from that because it's just all sugar. And then I, I quit those and went to Diet Coke and it was just a, a fierce fucking addiction. You're just moving addictions around. Well, I don't do booze anymore. I'll just drink 14, 16 ounce Diet Cokes a day. That's fine. Oh, I'll just fucking do some late night eBay shopping. That's fine. Just addiction movement. It's kind of like a Rubik's Cube. The red is cocaine. The blue side is booze. The green side is uh, is like Diet Coke. The yellow is shopping and you're just fucking just moving those addictions around. Never dealing with the true fucking demons that are pushing you to that. Sometimes it's not even uh, demons. I don't think I think it's just fucking boredom. People are like, yeah, man, I meet a lot of people out there that just uh, they don't have hope. And then hopefully uh, they come to the show, they laugh and they they leave and they're like, ah, fuck it. I'll, I'll go another day. <laughs> mm. Anyway, so yeah, I'm going to uh, strict regiment again for 24. No, you know, I do pizza on my birthday, which usually falls on... Um, the Super Bowl, I'll do a pizza. And I do pumpkin pie on Thanksgiving and my birthday right around there. I'll do those, which is coming up. I'm going to be 58 February 3rd, which is fucking crazy. 58. Speaking of that, I went to one of the greatest parties I've been to in a long, long time last night. A good friend, Mr. Scott Ian from Anthrax, Mr. Bungle, S.O.D., and uh, so much more music, uh, turned 60. That is fucking incredible, 60. When we were young, somebody 25, we would just cast off as old. And there I was last night. I was asked to host his party that Pearl, his wife, put together. Um, at this incredible venue at Galpin Ford, which was basically just a giant, giant warehouse with three rooms full of the most incredible cars and uh, rock and roll memorabilia and California culture. It's funny when people go, ah, California. When you get a fucking move out of there, that place is a dump. You're out of your mind. I was in this warehouse and looking around, and it was just pure California, which, by the way, one of the greatest, greatest painters on the planet was there last night, Mr. Robert Williams, the man that did the Appetite for Destruction album cover, but also did one of my favorite paintings of all time called Rust Demon, 
You can Google that. It is an amazing painting. And he is the uh, king of the juxtapo, juxtapo fucking uh, lowbrow art scene. He is the king. He is the king of the hot rod and lowbrow art. Guy is just amazing. But anyway, Scott Ian turned 60 last night on New Year's Eve. It's his actual birthday. His wife, Pearl, had put together this amazing secret party. Not secret, but she had some surprises for him. And she gathered around, I would say, uh, I would, I could count this. I've got the list, but maybe about 50 musicians to put on a full concert. Scott wanted to do a full three-hour live concert on his birthday for all his friends that were coming to the party. And he was, uh, his dream was to play all his favorite songs in chronicle, chronological order, meaning from the day he starts to love music all the way to this year. And there was just, he said he started out with 60 songs. He wanted to do 60 songs because he's 60, but he realized that would be four hours. So he trimmed it down to 44. And they asked me to kind of semi-host and sing a whole lot of Rosie, ACDC. It was just an honor to be included in that because I was looking around at the people that were there and the people that were playing. And I was just like, I was just blown away because it, it was just an honor to be asked to do this by a man that I've respected and loved his music my entire life almost. I remember seeing Anthrax and I talked to Scott Ian on my podcast about this. If you haven't heard that episode, go back and listen. I just love talking to this man. And uh, I first saw them, Anthrax, at the River Theater in Guerneville, California on the Spreading the Disease Tour, which I should have looked up what year that was, but uh, I'm dumb. Me and my good friend, Steve Goodrich, who uh, I still talk to, and he works at Dunlap now, and he's still in the music biz, and we, he played in my band, and we, we uh, loved Anthrax. We drove around in his, now I'm going to say it was a Datsun? I can't really remember, either Datsun or Toyota, and he had the... Uh, you know, the, the shitty little cassette player. And we would just crank spreading the disease nonstop, man. And I've been watching Anthrax ever since that River Theater, going to uh, Among the Living record, which is one of the greatest thrash metal records of all time. And then, of course, that full crossover with Public Enemy, Bring the Noise, me and uh, my man Fletch went to Fresno to see that. And uh, Public Enemy, I think Primus was on that. Yeah. And Anthrax. All the way out. I've been seeing Anthrax. I saw him this year at the Palladium. Sold out. Of course, one of my favorite bands of all time, Mr. Bungle. And now he's in that with Dave Lombardo. Uh, I went and saw that this year. And in 2019... I think it was 19 or yeah, 19. But anyway, my point is it's so bizarre to see somebody when you're a kid and then years later, you're on stage with them. He's 60. I'm going to be 58. Somewhere along the line, we became friends. We bonded over our absolute obsession of ACDC and our uh, tattoos, I've got Bon Scott, he's got Angus, both from the Highway to Hell cover. And I just love this man and, and his family, his wife Pearl, his son at Rebel. I, I can't even believe this kid's music talent. I don't know how old he is, maybe eight or nine. He is so smart and crushing. He played drums on a song, he played bass on a song, he played guitar on a song. And he sang, and this guy absolutely killed. He sang, oh, I want to get this. I sang like just full blown super punk vocals. I don't want to hear it, minor threat. 
attitude regulator bad brains subliminal by uh, suicidal it was unreal and then he got up on the drums and he played territory by sepultura full double bass <laughs> guys guy's a fucking savant man this guy can he can kill anyway so i was invited down and uh, there was two days of rehearsal. And it was amazing. Scott, just for his 60th birthday, he wanted to play music. I respected that so much. It's like, that's a dream, like to play with all his friends and play all this music and show his diversity. And I was listening to the set and talking to him and I was realizing this guy is exactly like me. He loves all music, disco, thrash, uh, AM pop, metal, everything, man. And uh, I'll give you a rundown of some of the people that played. <laughs> and I'm going to put a little uh, video up on my Instagram so you can see some of the people. Jerry Cantrell was there and he sang, uh, oh my God, he was great. He sang, you may be right, Billy Joel. Jerry Cantrell, no guitar, lead vocal up there. You may be crazy. The whole night started with, uh, with a Turbo Negro song, and that's not in chronological order. He just said he felt like that would be the best way to kick off a, uh, a concert. But uh, they did Hey Bulldog by the Beatles, okay? Then traveling band Credence, John Bush on vocals. Oh my God, this guy can sing like a man. John Bush, man, that that Anthrax era. I like both Anthrax. There's multiple Anthrax eras, but I love Joey Belladonna, and I also love uh, John Bush. And that John Bush only Sound of White Noise record, great, great. It was kind of like. If it would have been called another band other than Anthrax, uh, it probably would have just been super huge. But you got to keep that brand you've uh, fired up. Which, by the way, Pearl put together like a 25-minute mini documentary. And they showed that before the music started. And it was just insane to see Scott Ian's success from, uh, you know, small small little uh, apartment in Queens. And then, you know, starting Anthrax and watching that thing grow. I think it's incredible to see somebody start Anthrax in New York and then like a million years, I don't know, maybe 35 years or something later, they play at Yankee Stadium for the big four. There is nothing fucking cooler than that. It is just incredible to see a guy and his dreams come true when you're, you know, you're at a Yankee game. No way you ever think of one day we're going to play in here with Metallica, Slayer, and Megadeth, the big four. Unreal. This documentary was so cool. I hope they post it up on, uh, on YouTube because just to watch this man's success his one man show that he went around and did SOD, Mr. Bungle, just numerous, numerous massive accolades that he has reached in his career. And, and it's just a solid human, man. He loves fucking music. I look at him, I go, boy, shit, I don't even know if we could be in a band together because who would, <laughs> we would just sit at rehearsal and talk music all day. We wouldn't get shit done. Anyway, so the documentary was fantastic. Then this concert started with all these players and they rehearsed a couple of days, got it together. And to see some of these uh, uh, incredible players play stuff that you wouldn't expect, like Rob from Machine Head up there playing uh, Staying Alive, uh, Saturday Night Fever, the Bee Gees. You know, that kind of stuff was great. They played Levon with Pearl on vocals. Pearl, just a great, great singer. Her dad, of course, was uh, Meatloaf. And Pearl just sounded fantastic. And you could just see the actual joy in Pearl and Scott's face as they were up there 
uh, singing together. They did Don't Go Breaking My Heart. <laughs> they did that together. But Rich Girl, Hollow Notes, Pearl Kill. Uh, he's a whore, Cheap Trick, Teenage Lobotomy, Ramones, all different singers, all different players. Charlie, who's just been out there crushing it with Pantera. And, uh, you know, I really feel as I was watching Charlie last night, I was realizing something. I'm looking through this right here that I feel this guy's totally underrated, man. You know, he's in Pantera right now, but he wrote all, a lot of the riffs for Anthrax. He plays the shit out of guitar and his drumming, man. Last night I was watching him. I got a video of him. He's just fucking pocket back there. Just finesse. There's no like battling. He's just up there. He looks great. Kick ass hair. He's got a dope suit on. And he's just playing the shit out of everything last night. They had multiple drummers, multiple guitar players, multiple bass players, multiple singers. Uh, in the middle of the show was... Uh, Scott Ian's love of ACDC. So they did Down Payment Blues with Whitford Crane on vocals from Ugly Kid Joe, who also sings in, um, in Kirk Hammett's uh, side band, his uh, wedding singers band that he does with uh, Rob, Rob Trahelio. Wow, my fucking mouth wasn't working. Rob was there last night. And Rob was killing it on staying alive. <laughs> Fucking, I mean, this party, people are going to be talking about this party for years. Scott came in in the Batmobile. He made the his entrance into the Batmobile. Guy drove him in there. It landed on this circle thing and just started spinning to uh, Slayer. Come, 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 come. Anyway, I'm just rambling now because I'm, I'm so excited how how amazing the night was. <clears throat> they would go in and out of like pop to metal to AM stuff like, you know, Rich Girl and to Stand Alive and to Down Payment Blues. And then I did a whole lot of Rosie, which was crazy because uh, <clears throat> I want to get this right here. Uh James Lomenzo, remember him from White Lion on bass? Early on, I hadn't seen this guy since I was a kid. And he played in Zach Wilde's uh, side band. When Zach left Ozzy, he had this band, Leonard Skinhead, which basically turned into Pride and Glory. And uh, I booked a California tour with my band and Leonard Skinhead. And we went out, we did like four or five dates. That's where that... Um, old arm wrestling story comes from that I talked to Zach about on the podcast. But anyway, I hadn't seen him since then. So my group had, uh, uh, let's see, Tempesta on drums, who fucking smoked it in the Phil Rudd pocket back there. He's been playing with The Cure now for a while, but he played with Testament. And uh, I think he played Rob Zombie for a while. Uh, he's a Bay Area guy. It was loaded with Bay Area guys, you know? Rob from Machine Head, Gary Holt. They did Simple Man. Oh, my God. Gary Holt. Gary Holt. I can go on and on about this, man. The Ripper. They played the, the Ripper. Uh, no Class, Motorhead. And then they did, you know, like, oh, I got to tell you the highlight of the night here. So my good friend Jay Buchanan was uh, invited to the party and asked to sing like three songs. And it's great. Jay and I don't get to hang that much because he's on the road and I'm on the road. But we spent a couple days together at the rehearsals and then um, at, this, at the party last night, his wife and, and, and we were all there just festive. And God, I love Jay. He sang three of the great songs of the night, but the fucking... Smoker of the night was Careless Whisper. And to see J. Buchanan just crush this Careless Whisper, it was unreal, man. I mean, he did Zeppelin and he did um, he did some Aerosmith. 
But to see him do George Michael, and after I had just seen that Wham documentary a few months ago, and I'm, you know, been cranking Wham for months now, just loving it. But to hear Jay do Careless Whisper, I mean, this guy, I've said it over and over, one of the greatest singers I've seen in 20, 30 years, he could easily go out and do some badass R&B record, you know, kind of in like a, a, a flavor of like Marcus King, R&B, Wham, uh, Terrence Trent, Darby, Prince style. No problem, man. And he just killed it, man. Holy shit. Whole night, well, I left at 2 a.m., which is uh, real late for post-COVID Grandpa Dean. <laughs> it's like, holy shit, man. I don't really stay up past midnight after COVID happened. I go out to comedy store. I do my spots. I hang at the club for about an hour, laugh with friends. I go home. And uh, kick it with Gertie and go to sleep around 11 or 12. So out, I left at two. The last song of the night was Foo Fighters Everlong. Oh, by the way, Jay Buchanan also did Don't Stop Me Now by Queen, which is my favorite. I fell in love with that song after the Queen movie. It's so great. They call me Mr. Fahrenheit. I love that. I'll travel at the speed of light. Don't stop me. Don't stop me. Don't stop me. Hey, hey. <laughs> God, they killed. There was this guy, Zach. And I don't have his last name, unfortunately. But I guess he plays with Pearl. He was fucking monstrous, man. Guitar player, singer, just killer. Shout out to Zach, man. God, I wish I had his last name. I feel like a dick. I'm, I'm just going off this giant... A master list I had because I was kind of hosting too. If there's any downtime, I'd pop up. Hey guys, it was weird, you know. You get up there. Hey, so uh, how fun is this? You know, you're just trying to figure it out. Scott's like roast on people, but it, it wasn't that kind of crowd. You didn't want to be like, oh, what are you wearing, you fucking dick? <laughs> You'd look like a total asshole. But. um Anyway, thank you, Scott and Pearl and uh, Revel for having me. And uh, I, I just, it just, it was just, I couldn't have thought of a better way to spend my New Year's Eve than with uh, Scott Ian and all the Bay Area flavor that was in there. It was just wild. Oh, man. Oh, that's right. Trey was there. Uh, hold on. Let me get this. Uh, not Trey, sorry. Trevor from Bungle uh, was playing. Oh, you know who was there? Fucking uh, Doug Pinnock. King's X. Oh, my God. They played uh, Over My Head. King's X. God. Pearl sang uh, like, a, uh, like a Prayer, Madonna. Crushed. Anyway, you get the idea. I'm going to get out of this topic now because you guys are like, all right, we get it. You were at a fucking cool party with some goddamn superstars. <laughs> it wasn't about that. It's just more about being around all your friends. I think the the thought of uh, 2024 is just to try to spend as much time uh, with your friends and enjoy life. Shit's crazy out there. It was a fucking giant earthquake in Japan last night. We had a mini earthquake here this morning. I didn't feel shit. I was out cold from uh, not much sleep. Um, you know, so that's the theme, man. You get together with your friends and you do some psychedelics and look at stars. You know what I mean, man? Not movie stars, not rock stars. I'm talking about actual astrology, man. You get into astrology and just enjoy the fucking atmosphere. <laughs> mm. Okay. Scott Ian is 60. Fucking great. You know? I, I want to live to be 100. I don't know how, how that's going to happen. But uh, let's get in to my 
Top 10 records of 2024. That's what the end of the year is about. A bunch of people's dumb fucking lists. And uh, this is what I think was great. And this is the bad and the good of 2023. I said top 10 records of 2024, but it's really of 2023. Man, yeah, fucking here's my top 10 fucking hot dog list of 2023. The wiener schnitzel has not made the list. All right. So there was a lot of great records. And whenever I do this list, I realize, you know, I, re I research it pretty hard. What records was I listening to a lot in 23 that were new? And sometimes you miss them and people go, oh, I fucking no, uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. you didn't put any bu -bu 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 on your list. And they, you know, they try to like tweet at it and try to act like a band that's a friend of mine or whatever, try to cause some kind of bullshit drama. Hey, I can't believe you didn't have bu -bu 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 on your list. <laughs> bu -bu -bu -bu. That's what the uh, internet drama and trolls are to me they're the the peanuts gang voices i don't even fucking acknowledge it it's just like delete can't believe you didn't have on your list i can't even fucking delete anyway there's a lot of great records out in 23. There were a lot. I mean, fucking the amount of crushing music that came out in 23 is just mind boggling. Let's get into it. I would say number 10. Coming in at number 10. And I've got some kind of uh, extra ones that'll be on here. Number 10 is going to be Nick Perry, Underground Thieves. All right, he, uh, let me get this up here. He released a double album that took him a few years to put out and it just fucking kills, man. Let me look at this real quick. It, it is just, I mean, it's it's kind of like a, um, I guess it's a concept record. It feels like it. Um, so here it is. The record is just fucking great. I want to get it here for you. And uh, that's going to be my number 10. All right. Let me get this fucking thing here. The record's called Terra Firma. And it came out Jan uh, June 16th. So it was a summer record. And, oh my God, the first half of the record is just mind boggling. It's got all these kind of interludes in between the songs. It's got a great album cover. I believe he might have paid for it himself. And it uh, it is it is great. All right. I'm going to give that number 10. Number nine. I had these guys. Oh, by the way, I've had um, I've had uh, Nick Perry on the podcast. So if you're you're wondering what uh what he's all about it's a great great episode number nine goes to a band called spotlights absolutely fantastic alchemy for the dead is the record and it came out april 28th i had him on the podcast and it is a fantastic record and oh man i can't recommend this record enough Dig into it. Some of the tracks I recommend are um, Sunset Burial, False Gods, and uh, Crawling Towards the Light. Just, a, I mean, what a dark, dark, cool record. Alchemy for the Dead, the band is Spotlights. That's going to be number nine. Number eight is The Black Delta Movement. Now, I've been listening to this band. Hold on, let me get this up here. 
Black Delta movement, big daddies. Let's see. Uh, hold on. Okay. I've been listening to this band for a while. And uh, let me get the record here. Got to get this. God, it's so good. Uh, recovery Effects. That is the name of the record. And it is just fucking smoker. Came out April 14th, 2023. The Black Delta Movement. Unreal band. Unreal band. I want to check something real quick here. Hold on. Because uh, where is it? Uh, the other record that I had was uh, 2018. Preservation. So dig into that Black Delta movement, number eight. That was number eight, right? And then another band that is Black is the Black Angels, who, holy shit, man, have they been in my uh, heavy rotation for years. And they really remind me of the time I headlined out at uh, in Denver for a weekend this record came out that they had, let me get it for you, called Death Song. That came out in 2017. And there was a song on there called Currency that I could not stop listening to. Just an unbelievable band. I've seen them live twice. They just blow my mind, man. And uh, let me see here. Hold on. Bum, 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 bum. I'm trying to find the fucking, the, uh, this is, wait a minute. I'm, I'm fucking up here. I'm fucking up. Uh, so anyway, they put out a single, The Era of Dominance, September 22nd, 23. And uh, I guess the record's coming out in 24, but I've got a, uh, I've got a few of the tunes and I just wanted to pump this band. Oh, here, Phosphine Dream. That was the first record I got by them. And this record just kills. Oh my God. This is a great band. If you have not listened to it, dig in. So it doesn't really count as a record, I guess, because I've just got a few of the songs, but uh, I want to recommend the recommend the band over and over all the time because some of these indie bands I have on here, I just can't stop pumping them, you know. Um, King Gizzard, Black Delta Movement, the Black Angels, uh, who else? Oh, that Dwayne Betts record, that was fucking fantastic. That record, I just, you know, got into that record like a month ago or two months ago. It's just unreal. Okay, number, uh, so I guess that doesn't really count, you know, because it's, oh, I only got a few songs, but I just, I just think anytime I can promote, promote, anytime I could promote, promote the Black Angels, I've got to do it. You know, I just fucking love them. All right, so number seven, and it's two. Um, no, I got that wrong. Number seven, I'm fucking this up, you know, just because I didn't put it in the right order. I'm just kind of fucking fried. I forgot it was Monday. It's that fucking Christmas to New Year's where you just have no idea what fucking day it is. So you're just trying to put together your thoughts like, oh, I'll just start the recording and I'll be good to go. And then you get into it and you're like, oh my God. What I'm going to do is I'm going to number them and put them up on uh, my Instagram. And for now, I will just go through the list. Because I do know my number one and two, 100%. And uh, my, my one, two, three punch yeah. Um, okay, The Kills put out a new record. I still think 
that Allison is one of the greatest front humans of the last 20 years, just an incredible performer and a great human. And, and the kills are just unreal. If you haven't seen the kills live, do yourself a favor, man. It is fire. It is fire, man. I just can't believe how good, you know, Allison is. She gets up there just trashing her body with crazy moves. And, 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 and oh, man, get into the kills. They got a new record out. And uh, I highly recommend it. And also, I recommend all of the kills and her other, uh, the dead weather. So the kills... Right here, the record came out October 27th, so it's fairly new. God Games, great album cover. Just cool, the classic uh, bullfighter. Bullfighting's weird, man. I just don't fucking, I just don't understand bullfighting, but I do love the painting. I don't know who did it. Maybe she did it. She's a fantastic fucking painter. Uh, anyway, the tune on this one that's really knocked me out is 103. I listened to that song over and over. Kingdom Come, God Games, the title track. The Kills, get into this record. Oh, my God. Um. All right. Rival Son, speaking of Jay Buchanan, they dropped two records. Two records, and it it is crazy how underrated this band is. Oh my god, it makes me so fucking mad. I could talk about this band till I fucking die. Them, the mother hips, these bands that I just feel should be massive. And uh, you know, Rival Sons have had like their best year, but I still want them to be like arena level. They were out in Europe just selling out everywhere, just fucking killing it. Lightbringer and Dark Fighter, two records from these guys. Now, Dark Fighter had some of the best songs I've heard the guys put out. Rapture, Bird in the Hand. Oh my God, I love Bird in the Hand. And the videos were insane. Insane. Nobody Wants to Die, the first single. That should have been huge, that song. The hook is insane. Man. And then they put out Lightbringer, like six months later. And it has some songs that totally blow my mind, man. Uh, Mercy, Redemption, and the song Dark Fighter. Both records have incredible artwork and these guys, what I love about them is they're like, fuck you. We put out music that we love. And if you love it, you're on for the ride. All of their records blow my mind. Everybody's like, which record is your favorite? Almost impossible to pick. It would be between Great, uh, Great Western Valkyrie and Head Down. Pressure and Time got me into the band. And I love that. It's just... It's amazing the output of music these guys have done in the period of uh, 10 years that they've been together. And look for Scott Holiday to be playing some uh, fucking incredible guitar at the Bond Scott Bash. Uh, okay. Chris Stapleton, who I fell in love with a few years ago and uh, I'm just blown away by him. And I saw him on the Marcus King tour. It was the first time I got to see him live at that, what was that, Bourbon and Bourbon and Blues Festival or whatever. And he just, he just blew my mind, man. And his songwriting, his voice, his authenticity, everything about him, and his new record is fantastic. It's funny because you think about. Chris Stapleton is on a fucking roll. The last couple records had just been insane. The new one, Higher. And then uh, 
that record. Oh, fucking hold on, Traveler. I mean, his his records are insane. Traveler, what's that song on there? It is insane. Hold on, let me find it. God, what is it? Uh, it's the one he sings with his. Uh, wait, I don't think it's on there. The one he sings with his wife just blows my. Oh, starting over. Oh my god, that tune. Cold. This is on the starting over record. 2020. I'm all over the board on this, people. Sorry. But his new record, Higher, is kick ass. It's got some great, great songs on it. Classic Chris Stapleton. And uh, I believe Marcus King is doing some more tour dates with him. And Marcus King has a new record coming out. And I guess Rick Rubin finally let the, the uh, word out, which I've known over a year. Oh, I've known actually two years that he produced the new Marcus King record and it's going to blow some people's minds. It really is. Let's get down to the top three. Metallica, they put a record out and at their, uh, this depth of their career, they still are putting out fantastic music. No matter what uh, dummies say, Oh man, no Cliff Burton, no Metallica. Ah, oh, no Jason, no Metallica. Ah, oh, this they cut their hair, no Metallica. Oh, they did a record with Lou Reed, no Metallica. Eh, fucking dummies. These guys have been around 42 years, just killing it. And they put out just straight up molten metal record, April 14th, 2023, 72 seasons. I just saw them play one of the best gigs of their career out at uh power trip they just smoked everybody and uh fucking hats off to them man this record luxie turner come on man uh what else i love on this uh, oh if darkness had a son holy shit too far gone whole record kills it's just a great piece of metal if this was some new band's record, people would be like, oh my God, have you heard 72 Seasons by uh, the Broken Eyeball? You know? <laughs> mm. So they're in there. I guess uh, I'm right around the top three here. Metallica would be number three. Now my number one is really tough because there's two records that came out this year that absolutely blew my mind. One of them is by a band that I never listened to. And they put this record out and I listened to this record for six months straight. And I cannot stop listening to this record. And, uh, and then the other record is by a band and one of my favorite humans on the planet. So, one and two rotate back and forth. So I can't really do a one and two, I guess. I mean, I guess I could, but uh, it would be hard. I guess it'll go like this. Number two, Avenge Sevenfold. Life is but a dream. This record blows my mind and I'll be listening to it for years and years and years. Kind of like jellyfish spilt milk to where I'm just like, constantly turning people on to this record and it was an honor to have the guys on on the podcast and i think that this particular record might have uh weeded out some of the old fans which is a lot of times great if it gains you a ton of new fans and that's what i think this record has done it is very uh very divided amongst the Avenged Sevenfold fans, I'm sure, from what I read over the year, uh, the last year. This record, it really, really blows my mind how fucking good it is and how original it is. Just the, I can't even really describe what it is. It's, it's outrageous. And I've been listening to it, like I said, since the day it came out, somebody turned me on to it. I was like, ah, eh, 
I'll give it a spin. I've been trying to like Avenged Sevenfold for years. And I know they are out there waving the flag of rock. I know they uh, came up on GNR and Pearl Jam. And, you know, they uh, they like all the good stuff. And then they drop this record. And I'm like, holy shit, this thing is fantastic. Man, hats off to you, Avenged Sevenfold. And like I said, it's tough to go from one and two. But I would say this next record is uh, turned into one for me because it has uh, done something that only, I think, you 2 Octung Baby record has done for me, which was... When the record first came out, I was like, yeah, this is cool record. Um, but I didn't really probably have the uh, mindset of taking it all in. And this band has so many masterpieces in their catalog that it's constantly the comparison thing. But Queens of the Stone Age and Times New Roman. When I saw them live last, what, two, three weeks ago at the forum, I immediately was like, oh, I fucking get this record. And I cannot even tell you how much I've been listening to it ever since. And I liked it when it came out. Do not get me wrong, but there was a shit ton of stuff going on in my life. And there was a shit ton of music out. And I just didn't have the proper bandwidth to sit down and understand how deep this fucking record is. And with the stuff that Josh has gone through, it, it you start to look at this and you think, man, how did he make this record with everything he was going through in his life? Cancer, a divorce, and, you know, way deep in your career with Queens of the Stone Age. What are you doing? Do you keep doing Queens? Do you start something new? Do you go and do uh, them crooked vultures? Do you, who knows? You know, those questions you ask yourself as an artist. What makes me fucking feel good? What's going to make me, uh, you know, be able to sit with myself for the next year? And this record is just fucking smoking. I understand it now. Emotion sickness unbelievable paper mache uh sorry paper machete unbelievable but live i became a fan of this song time and place and it just now is in heavy rotation with me like daily it is such a great song and this record is kind of dead kennedy's meets some zeppelin it's, it's just fucking great. So if you haven't listened to it or you're like me and put it on and went, yeah, okay, cool, new queens and move on, don't do that. Don't do that. Do yourself a favor and go back and give this record the proper fucking bandwidth that it takes to, uh, you know, acknowledge it, take it in. Anyway. There you go. Some uh, mentions, the Stones, 79 years old. Now they're 80. Keith and Mick put out a great record. Uh, a lot of dummies were out there. Best record since uh, Some Girls casting off a masterpiece like Tattoo You. That's insane. I do like this record a lot. I like it better than the blues record. Uh, I'm not a blues guy. You know you beat me. I get it. I know it's the uh, it's the uh, you know the birth of rock and roll, and I love original blues guys. Oh my god, BB King, Freddie King, James Cotton. I love all the blues guys, but I don't like when people play the blues other than somebody like Stevie Ray Vaughan that fucking smokes it. Oh my God. But, uh, you know, the Stones, they put out the blues record. A lot of people liked it. I get it. But it's, uh, to me, it's always incredible when somebody 
and I've said it many times, and speaking of Rob Flynn from Machine Head, when somebody's in a band for all those years and then they drop some kind of fucking great, great masterpiece or, or killer fucking uh, killer songs. I'm looking up the Stones record here. Sorry, guys. Um, what the fuck? Where is it? Come on. Um, I, I mean, I talked about the Stones album pretty fucking hard uh, a few episodes ago. I do not know why. Here we go. The Rolling Stones. How great is the fucking Stones? Come on, man. It's fucking absurd. That song, Sweet Sounds of Heaven, is just fucking great. I hate the album cover. I absolutely hate the album cover that the Rolling Stones put on Hackney Diamonds. It is uh, awful. <laughs> Stones have had some unreal album covers over their time. Think about that. Sticky Fingers, Some Girls, one of the best album covers ever. Um, that one uh, with Charlie on the cover, the live record. Oh God, it's so cool. The Tattoo You cover, great. But this cover, straight trash. But the fucking record's got great songs. They're up for a Grammy for Angry, which is, uh, I wish it wasn't that song. I hated that song. When it came out, I was like, nope. But man, Sweet Sounds of Heaven with Lady Gaga, on fucking real. Um, uh, Bite My Head Off, Killer. The first, or, or, or sorry, two, three, four. What a knockout. Get close. It is so good. Depending on you. Oh my God. 80 years old. They're going out on tour and they're just fucking smoking it. So that's uh, some of the records there that I uh, absolutely worship this year. Thank you to those bands for just setting out unbelievable art into the world and and actually making music in this time where people don't pay for it it's uh I, I, you know thank you i can't thank you enough for that so there you go i hope to see you guys at the bon scott bash that will be next tuesday january 9th please get your tickets i cannot tell you um how great this show is going to be. It's just, you know, Bill Burr and myself doing full on comedy. And then we take a little break and then we come back and we do a full Bon Scott era ACDC tribute. And uh, I hope to see you guys there. And I hope to see you at some of the live shows. Acme uh, in Minneapolis, once again, Comedy Cellar in Vegas and uh, Comedy Fork in Fort Collins, Colorado. Those are some of the upcoming shows. Have a great week. And uh, thank you. Patreon.com slash Dean Del Rey. Just put up a bonus episode a few days ago. And uh, thank you for all the Patreoners. Oh, and I want to give a, a shout out to um, somebody that uh, shot a donation to the uh, podcast. Hold on, let me get this for you. Let me get this for you guys. I just want to give him some love because it was uh, very kind. Very cool. Oh, phone's popping off now. I turned it off. Uh, I turned it off. Uh, what do you call it? Airplane mode. Ding! Here it is. Maximilian Von Burke. What a cool name. Thank you for the love. He says, thanks for another year of Let There Be Talk. And uh, I'll thank you, Maximilian, for tuning in. My God, thank you so much. And thanks to all of you. Subscribe on your YouTube and leave a review on the iTunes. Candles lit, my friends. Happy New Year. Happy 2024. See you out there in the world. <laughs>